love Jesus, can come to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. And we thank God that we are worshiping today from Metropolitan Baptist Church in Scotch Plains, New Jersey, where the Reverend Griffin Sr. is pastor. Hi, my name is Today Howard, and I'm here to deliver the word of God. We pray that you will join with us as we continue in worship, worshiping the name of Jesus. I bring you greetings from Holy Trinity Christian Church in Plainfield, New Jersey. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, most gracious God, we thank you on today. We give your name praise and we give your name glory. For you are worthy to be praised and there's none like you in all of the earth. Yeah, Lord. So we lift up your name in this place. Yeah. We glorify you. We thank you for the word that will come forth. We thank, thank you, Lord. God, thank for you. what you've put in my belly. Yeah. Let it be bitter in my mouth, yet sweet to the ears of your people. Yeah. We pray, oh God, that when we hear your word, we will apply it to our lives. That yeah. may never be the same. That will be changed oh, in yeah. Jesus' name. Jesus we name. thank you. We give your name praise. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, 
and perceived that these were unlearned and ignorant men. They marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. I think today on this Father's Day, I'd like to talk about these men had a Jesus jolt. Jeez, these men had a Jesus jolt. The church today sometimes persecuted, ridiculed, and even ignored. Often needs encouragement. Yes. And the book of Acts reminds us that despite modern challenges, the church can be alive and well. And Acts shows how revival and church growth comes not by human effort, mm -hmm. but solely through the power of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. And in order to understand chapter 4 in its entirety, today it's necessary to just take a snapshot view of the previous chapters. You see, Jesus, after appearing to his disciples for 40 days, he tells them to wait in Jerusalem mm -hmm. for the fulfillment of his promise concerning the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And 10 days after his ascension, the promise is fulfilled and the disciples are suddenly empowered and filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes. Well, this book records the earth-changing events of the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit arrived. You see, the Holy Spirit transformed a small group of fearful men into a thriving worldwide church that is ever moving forward and fulfilling the Great Commission. All right. Well, the disciples are filled with courage to proclaim the brand new message of the resurrected Savior. And while well, Peter and John, the praying men that they were, went to the temple. And the Bible tells us it was approximately 3 in the afternoon. A crippled man was placed at the gate called Beautiful, typically every day to beg for those who would enter the temple court. Yeah. And like most beggars of today, when this man saw Peter and John, he asked them for money. Yeah. And I am sure you had experienced the sight and the situation of a beggar. And in those cases, they ask for money, and typically, the money given is rarely used for the purpose that it has been asked. Mm. But this day, Peter recognized the real need of the beggar, and he responds, look at us. Yeah. Well, the beggar suddenly gave his attention to them, expecting something from them, uh -huh. probably on a monetary note. Uh -huh. However, these spirit-filled operating men tell the beggar, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, yeah. walk. walk. And then Peter helped him to his feet. Yeah. Uh, the beggar held on to Peter and John as the people were astonished and ran toward them. Uh -huh. yes. Well, Peter spoke to the onlookers addressing their surprise, and the lame man had been healed by a joke. Of yes. Jesus. Well, but this shocking development was not pleasing to everyone. Uh, the religious leaders of Jerusalem confronted them and said, You are under arrest and probably tossed the pair in jail. Mm -hmm. And I'm convinced that not everyone wants you to get a glimpse or a jolt of yes. Jesus. Yes. Not everyone wants you to have that sweet communion yes. with the Savior. And so the rulers and the elders and the scribes, along with Annas and the high priest and Casiphas, John and Alexander and others who were of the high priestly family, all swung around them and demanded to know by what power, by what power or what name do you do this? And he made it abundantly clear by the faith in the name of Jesus was the beggar made strong. Yes, yes. Well, you see, uh, uh, they neither took credit, uh -huh. no compliments for what had just been Amen. accomplished. Uh -huh. I'm amazed sometimes in the church how folks want to take credit uh -huh. for everything that's done. Uh -huh. You got to call your name. Thank you, Sister Sue. <laughs> Peter 
John. Trouble the Sadducees who believed that there was no afterlife. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to suggest that the enemy is always troubled and threatened by anyone who operates in the spirit. Do All I right, yes, yes. Do All I right. Right. That All anyone right. that operates in the power of the Holy Ghost, the enemy is always threatened. Yes. The yes. enemy is always scared. The enemy is always looking for ways to keep you bound. Yes. Yes. You see, it was only natural that the Sanhedrin court, the Supreme Court of the Jews, would be upset that these men were preaching that Christ was alive. Uh -huh. uh, but in the middle of the story, a statement is made that we just can't ignore. Let's look at verse 13 because it shows the outward acknowledgement that yes. Peter and John had been with Jesus. And this time that these disciples had spent with Jesus, resulting in these men knowing their mission and their message was divine. These men knew the power that they had through Christ made them invincible. Yeah. Uh, they, they weren't looking for their own strength that made them invisible, yeah. invincible. They realized that it was through Christ yeah. that they had the power yeah. of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Well, these men knew if God be for us, yeah. who can be against us? Do I have a witness? Yeah. These, this heavenly power given to these men would be the shake up needed to make the difference mm -hmm. and the distinction in the lives of God's people. Well, allow me to illustrate. There is or used to be a defibrillator, and the name of it was called the HP Forerunner. It is a portable defibrillator. I see somebody smile. <laughs> you see, sudden cardiac arrest can strike without warning yeah. anytime and anywhere. All right, man. Regardless of age. Somebody reminded me of my age today. <laughs> uh, but regardless of age or health, yeah. sudden cardiac arrest uh -huh. can happen to anyone. Yeah. And Len Uma, at that time, was 46 years old, who never left home without a textbook size defibrillator. Mm. A miniature version of the devices found in every emergency room and ambulance. And so if his heart decided to stop when he was at his desk or on the streets, a colleague or a passerby could easily revive him with a joke. Yes. Well, if you've ever watched an old show called ER, you know the drill. Yes. It says charge, uh -huh. clear, contact, uh -huh. goodbye. Uh -huh. And sudden cardiac arrest, it strikes up to 350,000 Americans, perhaps signifying that the film is a good investment. However, no high-tech companies such as Hewlett Packard can claim to be the first to surprise the world with a joke of life-saving juice. All right, now. now this distinction solely belongs to Peter and Paul. Right. You see, sure, portable defibrillators are saving lives, but as Peter makes it clear in this passage, Jesus is the joke that is really needed in our lives. Yeah. And everyone knows a joke a sudden shock and when one uses a defibrillator it analyzes the heart's rhythm, rhythm and if necessary allows a rescuer to deliver an electric shock to a victim of sudden cardiac arrest. Mm -hmm. Well this shock called defibrillation may end the rapid and chaotic heart duty, heart activity and help to reestablish an effective rhythm of its own. This device helps us to take a look at resuscitation. I know. I'd like to suggest that upon contact with Jesus, resuscitation occurs. Mm -hmm. That's what I'd like to suggest yes. today, that one is surely brought back to life. Well, how do I know? Look at man in his original state. He was without sin. He was walking in the cool of the day. That's what the Bible says. Enjoying the benefits and the beauty of the garden. Yet man sinned against God. And the relationship man once had was now separated by sin. 
resulting in a need for salvation. Well, 1 Corinthians 15 and 23 reminds us, it says, For as in Adam all die, yes. so in Christ all will be made alive. Yes. In other words, those in Adam, every human being, faces physical death because of sin. Every believer, those in Christ, can anticipate eternal life because of the resurrection. Yes. The defibrillator delivers a defibrillation counter shock to restore the heart to its normal productive rhythm. Yes. Jesus is our rescuer. Amen. And he will deliver the joke we need yes. to change our wicked hearts to a heart of worship. And the Bible that I read reminds me that he is the great physician who will remove chaotic heart activity and replace it with Christ-centered activity that will give him glory. Mm -hmm. We will no longer be victims of cardiac arrest, mm -hmm. allowing Satan to influence our minds and infiltrate our heart and our soul. Mm -hmm. Well, we talked about resuscitation, that upon contact with Jesus, resuscitation occurs. But I'd also like to say that upon contact with Jesus, restoration mm. occurs. And, and I can recall growing up in Plainfield, New Jersey, that there was a house across from us. It was the historic district. And it was in very poor condition. And the porch was deteriorating and the roof had almost attacked itself. But for some reason, when I would look at it, I could see the beauty that once existed. I could see that this house was well made of quality wood and the craftsmanship, my God, and the design was like no other house on the block. Mm -hmm. And this house was one of a kind. However, the owner could not afford to restore the house mm -hmm. back to its original condition. And in my mind, it never lost its character. It was only hidden by the deterioration and the decay that had rested on it. Well, one day, the owner decided to sell. And the owner moved out. And suddenly, there were a team of men, and I called them the restoration crew. Wow. And they managed to retile the roof, repair the wood frame and replaced all that was worn out and had fallen apart. Not long had passed, and the house had been restored. Mm. These men had taken an old house and made it like new, allowing the owner to safely live in it. You see, only Jesus can restore the house of him. And before we knew him, our heart was desperately wicked. Sin had separated us from God and left us in our fallen state. Yes. Well, eternal death and damnation would have surely come. But we could not afford the price that had to be paid for our spiritual restoration. But Christ disarmed and he distinguished the fiery darts of Satan and his demonic followers on the cross, stripping them of their power. Mm. Ephesians 2, 1 through 4 says, confirms that we once were dead in our transgressions yes. mm -hmm. and sin in which we used to live. Mm -hmm. But because of the richness of God's mercy and the richness of his grace, we are made alive yeah. in Christ. Well, it said upon contact with Jesus, there's resuscitation. Upon contact with Jesus, there is restoration. Yes. But upon contact with Jesus, I just stop by and say that rejuvenation occurs. Yes. But let's look at it because rejuvenation implies to give active strength or energy of the body or mind. Let's look at that again. Rejuvenation implies to give active strength or energy of the body or mind. Mm -hmm. yeah. Look at the definition. It uses the term active strength. And this implies 
for the believer. Our strength can only be activated by the power hey. of the Holy Ghost. All right. All right. And there are a number of references of the activity of the Holy Spirit in Acts. He baptizes believers into the body of Christ, thus forming the church. Mm -hmm. His presence in the believer is evidence of the new birth. Yeah. He fills the believer for witnessing, for leadership, for strength, That's right. and for special discernment. Peter and John certainly did not operate in their own strength. Huh? The Bible tells us that these men had a joke of Jesus. <laughs> these men did not operate in their own strength. The Bible tells us that these men had been to the temple to pray. Well, they continue to give God the glory. Yeah. My, what happens, my, 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 what happens when men pray? <laughs> Their faith had been activated and now could experience God's greatest gift, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. They were able to offer the lame man active strength of his limbs and walk. Yeah. And through the power, power of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Now, allow me to refresh your memory of the components of walking. You see, walking implies you are going in some way. That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, watch out for folks who spend all their time walking and never <laughs> really move or go all anywhere. Right. All right, now. Now, secondly, walking assumes continuous movement. Yeah, amen. It, it, means you, it means you keep going. And if you fall, you get up and you start walking again. Yeah, amen. So can you imagine how long it would take? If you only practice on Sunday mm. and then sat around for the rest of the week, All right, a lot of us do the same and then wonder why we have no active oh. spiritual All right. strength. All right. All right. The third component of walking is dependence and putting your weight down on your legs one leg at a time. Yeah. The dependence means walking, you are trusting your legs to hold you up. That's right. Walking in the spirit means that you're depending on the Holy Spirit. Yes. You're depending on Jesus. Yes. You're depending on Him to hold you up. Let me get a little closer. If you prayed this morning yes. and then the Spirit doesn't hear from you again all day means you're praying for the Spirit to get you started. Yes. But then leaving Him out of the rest of the day. Yes. Look at Peter and John. Because these men in the middle of the day were at the temple praying. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. 